This is Dr. Mimi Lam from Metro Health Medical Center, and I would like to explain how you can recognize a mixed acid-base disorder. Let's start by reviewing the four simple acid-base disorders. By definition, acidosis means a decrease in pH, while alkalosis means an increase. As we look at the arterial pH, PCO2, and serum bicarbonate, note that for the metabolic disorders, the primary disturbance is a change in serum bicarbonate concentration, which decreases in acidosis and increases in alkalosis. A compensatory reaction then results in either hyperventilation for an acidosis or hypoventilation for an alkalosis. Note that the compensatory reaction is smaller than the primary disturbance, but goes in the same direction. For respiratory disorders, the primary problem is with the lungs or with breathing. With respiratory acidosis, hypoventilation causes an increase in PCO2. With alkalosis, there is hyperventilation and a decrease in PCO2. Now the kidneys initiate the compensation, retaining bicarbonate in acidosis and excreting it in alkalosis. Again, note that the compensatory reaction is smaller than the primary, but goes in the same direction. So how do we know when an acid-base disorder is not one of these four simple ones? There are several ways to approach this question and all kinds of formulas and charts that can be used. Here we'll cover four clues, one formula, and one helpful figure. To start with the clues, you should suspect that a mixed acid-base disorder is present if, number one, the serum bicarb and PCO2 go in opposite directions, or two, if there is a disparity in the degree of change in pH, serum bicarb, and or PCO2, or three, if there is an elevated anion gap despite fairly normal acid-base parameters, or four, often closely related to three, if acid-base parameters are near normal despite the presence of a condition expected to produce an acid-base disorder. So let's look at three examples that will illustrate these points. In the first one, pH is 7.20, PCO2 50, and serum bicarb 19. Note that the PCO2 and bicarb go in opposite directions. The PCO2 is high, with the normal being 40 to 44, but bicarb is low, with the normal being 24 to 28, while pH is very low. So think what combination might result in this set of numbers. As you might imagine, if you combine the two types of acidosis, the respiratory acidosis will increase the PCO2, while the metabolic acidosis will decrease the serum bicarb, and both will decrease the pH. In our second example, pH is 7.38, PCO2 22, and bicarb 12. Here you have a disparity in the degree of abnormality of the three parameters. pH is normal, but PCO2 is very low, and serum bicarb is also very low. This suggests that there are opposing acid-base disorders, one acidosis and one alkalosis, both of which will decrease the PCO2 and bicarb. So a metabolic acidosis and a respiratory alkalosis would explain this set of numbers, resulting in a fairly normal pH with a very low PCO2 and a low serum bicarb. In our third example, the pH is 7.42, PCO2 39, and serum bicarb 22. All of these fall just about in the normal range, and yet something must be very wrong because we see the serum creatinine of 10.6. We know that advanced renal failure is associated with a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. And in fact, the anion gap here is the sodium minus the sum of chloride plus bicarbonate, which is 19. Therefore, in this example, we're looking for something that can balance a metabolic acidosis and hide its presence. A metabolic alkalosis can do just that, resulting in a fairly normal pH, PCO2, and serum bicarb, although the anion gap cannot be hidden and therefore provides a valuable clue. As you may know, there is a helpful formula that can be used when a metabolic acidosis is involved. It's called the Winters formula, and it says that in a metabolic acidosis, 
with appropriate respiratory compensation, the expected PCO2 in millimeters of mercury is 1.5 times the serum bicarbonate in milliequivalents per liter, plus 8, plus or minus 2. If the actual PCO2 is less or more than expected, then another primary disorder that independently affects breathing must be present. In this example, with a serum bicarb of 14, the Winters formula predicts a PCO2 of 1.5 times 14, or 21, plus 8, plus or minus 2, or 29, plus or minus 2. The actual PCO2 of 24 reveals the presence of a second disorder, respiratory alkalosis, that is independently causing hyperventilation beyond what is expected. In the second example, with a serum bicarb of 8, Winters predicts a PCO2 of 1.5 times 8, or 12, plus 8, plus or minus 2, which is 20, plus or minus 2 for the PCO2. And the actual PCO2 of 32 suggests the presence of a respiratory acidosis that is causing hypoventilation beyond what is expected. Finally, if all else fails, you can use an acid-based nomogram. There are several versions, and this one displays the PCO2 on the x-axis, the plasma bicarb on the y-axis, and the pH in the diagonal isobars. There are confidence bands for the various acid-based disorders, so that, for instance, with our first example, we can plot the three parameters and see that they fall between the respiratory acidosis and the metabolic acidosis bands. For the second example, we can see that the parameters fall between respiratory alkalosis and metabolic acidosis. But for the third example, the parameters fall within the normal range. Again, here the clue is the underlying disorder, renal failure, and the presence of the clinically expected anion gap. So in summary, to diagnose a mixed acid-based disorder, you can use the clues that we've given, the Winters formula, and or the nomogram. But in the end, it is still important to know which acid-based disorder is expected in a given clinical setting.